Oh, good evening and welcome to Be More Super Live. I'm Brian, joined by my lovely co-host, Mr. Daniel Fudge. Daniel, how the devil are you, sir? I'm all right, mate. I sound a lot better than you. You sound like utter trash. How are you feeling? Oh, mate, I have literally got a chesty cough. Um, I feel like death warmed up and I'm just getting ready, um, getting all my stuff ready because we haven't got a live show next week because... Um, Mr. Garner here is going to be in Chicago in the U.S. of A. Um, Mixing hob- it with the stars. Yes, hobnobbing it with the stars in Chicago. Um, and I don't know if I'm just feeling a bit under the weather because I'm just thinking about the flight and the travel and everything like that, or if it's just just mm-hmm. tiredness. I mean, I've got kids. Um, yep. You know, I, I I I work in the day, so who knows? Dan, I love your hair. Uh, I've got to put put this on. Uh, there you go, Julia Plews. Um, I tell, I'll you, tell you what, you, Julia, that's very kind of you. Uh, what this is is a grown out version a of me going <laughs> going, <laughs> going to the hairdressers. Uh, I, I don't even remember a few weeks ago, about God, about seven or eight weeks ago. Now we had um, we had uh, Jamie King on, who uh, who'd been in a movie with uh, with Frank Grillo. And I walked into the hairdressers that day and went, "Give me a Frank Grillo for the purposes of a joke," and uh, and it's been difficult to try and maintain. So I've got a newfound respect for Frank Grillo and his hair hair care produce. But this is now my own twist on the Frank Grillo. Ergo, I haven't had it cut yet. So I really appreciate that, Julia. That's uh, made my day. That I'm gonna. Plus, it's a wig. <laughs> no, <laughs> <To my>, <laughs> next <laughs> the week after next, you're gonna have like dreadlocks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But um, Upper, but yeah. So we haven't got a guest this week. So it's uh, it's you and me, Dan, uh, shooting the mm-hmm. breeze, talking about the latest um, news from the entertainment world. And there's been quite quite a bit because there's been an event called CinemaCon, and mm-hmm. it's where all these studios come together and they show off some of their movies, the up the upcoming shows, etc. And uh, mm-hmm. there's some really good announcements. There's some. I'm not so sure about. To be fair, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna end up falling out on a few of these, aren't we? We're gonna end up. We're probably. gonna have a differing opinion about a lot of this. Aren't so we? the first one that Paramount went crazy for at, at CinemaCon mm. was an R-rated. So for anyone in the UK, R-rated is basically 18. Mm. You know, it's adults only. So R-rated mm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie called The Last Ronin, which is based on the comic book. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is your view on an R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Because that's sort of our childhood growing up with the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. And now they're going to be turning it into an adult movie? Uh, well, I, 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 the term adult movie brings up different connotations, but I know what you mean. But the um, <laughs> the original Eastman and Laird comic definitely had some um themes of an adult nature it Mm. a lot can be said with the uh and it was kind of diluted you know for 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 a kid's audience a lot could be said for the similar movies such as the mask you know what i mean Mm. there's uh there was in the original text there was a lot of different uh outcomes especially when he goes to see the mechanics that do over stanley ipkiss so Mm. to get the teenage mutant ninja turtles up to um up you know up to the original type the way the lord intended albeit 40 years later the issue is is is, is like what you say brian you've got you've got these we've had 40 years of this diluted kid show essentially and uh to, to to bring it up to date i'm glad they've done it because like you say this is this is who it's for Right. So Mm. let let me give you an example. Right. I was really disappointed in 2007 when they brought out Transformers because Mm. they'd made it for a new audience. It kind of annoyed me Mm. because the kids nowadays, they weren't there, man. They didn't know the kids of 2007. They didn't know what Transformers was, why we made it for them, what they made it for them for. So to now have Ninja Turtles given the same treatment, I'm not unhappy about it. If I'm honest, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw those kids. But it's been rebooted like a number of times for a new child audience. So I feel mm. like it's not even for us. It's for the guys, the kids who were kids in 2003 when it was TMNT, you know, well, those type of guys. Well, Taylor, um, sorry, sorry, yeah, Taylor Burton Smith, who co-wrote the upcoming movie uh, Boy Kills World. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it. It looks amazing. 
He also mm -hmm. uh, wrote um, for the 2019 reboot of Child's Play. Um, mm -hmm. So he's actually writing the script. So I don't know if, if that's to go off anything. But it's going to be quite interesting to see uh, because we're used to seeing the uh, tur turtles being sort of, I don't know, friendly looking. So mm -hmm. do we reckon that these turtles are going to look a bit more, I don't know, mutated? Do you know what I, I mean? Know, Not as, as family like, friendly. I feel like the, the computer generated ones around, what, 2015, 2016, mm. they, were, they were still quite grotesque to look at. You know what I mean? Uh, but then yeah. they've had another reboot since on Netflix as a, as a computer generated cartoon. So I kind of, mm. I like the idea of it. I, 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 re I really like the idea that they're, that they're going to be grotesque and we're going to hear Michelangelo say shit or something like that. I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> Cowabunga mother. Yeah. 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 But, but this is, but this is the post. Well, this is the comic um, from the last Ronan that, that they're going to be base basing it off. So I'm just looking now at what the turtles look like and you can sort of see the face. So this is sort of the style that we're going to be looking for, but I don't see a shell. I don't see that stereotypical sort of, turtle look so who knows it's not the ones we used to dress up as as butlins mate uh, you know what no. i mean it's, uh, it's a <laughs> no. different different they world it's not for they us good it, they, they were they were elite costumes to be fair mm. and, and when you're wearing one as far as the kids were concerned you were Raphael. Mm. yeah they were on par with what was in the films in my my except for the animatronic head do you know what i mean it yeah. looked exactly like the films so, uh, so yeah, so this is set to be coming out in 2025 or 2020, 26. There's no real news around when exactly it's coming out. It's just been announced by Paramount that, that they've actually greenlit it and it's coming out, which I'm really looking forward to. thing is, yeah. uh, remakes and re reboots, it's just getting on my nerves now. There's too mm -hmm. many. They need to just mm -hmm. focus on new things. Um but hey, that's me. But a new Star Trek mo movie is coming out as well. Uh, <laughs> what a segue that was, Brian. That was that was elite. That was, bro. You did really well. All this thing is rubbish. What they're doing? Hollywood needs to get some some original <laughs> ideas. In the meantime, is is the next instalment of a fifty year old franchise? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and do you know what? I I I can't believe that it's. It's been this long. I think 2016 was the last time we had a Star Trek mo movie. So that's like, mm -hmm. what, eight years ago, which is crazy, crazy. And they've tried and tried and tried. But I've got uh, some info on here saying that, um, what's it got here, is reporting developing a sequel to Beyond, which would feature the reboot cast from the 2009 movie. So mm -hmm. from the 2009, that is uh, the stars, the next Star Trek movie is not that sequel, but instead as an origin story that takes place decades before the 2009 film. So I think what they're doing is, in my opinion, I think they're trying to reboot it to try and react, reactivate the franchise. Because Star Trek is broken, um, you know, in the way of the series. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you've you got Discovery that's ending, you've got Strange New Worlds, and then the films, it's not like, I think we were talking last week about Star Wars and, and, and what Star Wars does, which is an incredible, which is, you know, you've got these set series like Mandalorian and Boba Fett and you've got um, Obi-Wan Kenobi and then you've got the films and they marry up all very, very well. You know, the stories mm -hmm. interwine per perfectly. But with Star Trek, there's something not sort of, gelling between all of these so maybe this reboot could be the answer to the future of the franchise because it's not going away it's been around as you said over 50 years and mm -hmm. you know it's got a fan base on par i would say as star With wars the star wars gang yeah. gang i i know what you mean but there's an element of the 2009 reboot if, if they're doing a origin story of that lot we've already seen how they end up on the enterprise we've already seen chris pine get his ass kicked and be a bit of a dick and we've seen um mm. we've seen uh thor you know chris hemsworth as his dad go down fighting the romulans or whatever in the opening scene so you know what i mean what, what, what more of that story is there to tell and if it's not got um if it's not got Billy Butcher in it, then who, who really gives a shit? <laughs> but if it's an origin story, surely it should have 
Chris Hemsworth in it because he was yes. at the beginning he was Kirk's dad. So so mm. if they're looking at an origin story, surely he's going to come back. So Chris is going to look slightly different to how he did in that 2009 movie yeah. because I don't think he knew what muscles were back then and now he's just yeah just like a beast um so 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 yeah so again that is going to be directed by Toby Haynes who directed Andor your favorite Star Wars series oh god it was trash <laughs> and then uh he, he directed Doctor Who as well with a script by uh Seth Graham Smith who wrote the Lego Batman movie and Abraham it Lincoln vampire hunter which actually i really liked i like that movie there's a, there's a lot of trash but there's a lot of great in what you've just said there you finished strong on that one brian with lego batman and abraham lincoln vampire hunter big fan big fan <laughs> and then <clears throat> this is where i think i don't know i'm not sure so it was announced as well that they are remaking one of arnold schwarzenegger's classics um, and it's not Terminator because obviously that's been made, made plenty of times. Uh, it's The Running Man. Mm -hmm. The Running Man. And I've got to say, I found this poster and I want to show it off. You know, like Mondo. Have you ever heard of Mondo? So Mondo is sort of like um, like a poster artist. It's like um, a collaboration of different artists and, and they put this spin on posters. This is the Mondo mm -hmm. version of The Running Man poster. <coughs> That which, is that is probably stuff which I really like. So they're going to remake it. So first of all, what's your impressions? Because I know that you actually like this movie, or am I wrong? This movie, no, this movie I really enjoyed as a kid. I thought it was brilliant. But uh, but I, uh, this is the this is the interesting thing about this movie. It was brilliant because it got a lot right in terms of the way that the world was going to go. That it was going to be this multimedia. Uh, this multimedia world where nothing was quite as it seems and it was all spin and it was all lies and it was all trash just to get ratings and get people watching and get every you know what i mean i really mm. loved that it that it drew in on that and then it must have spawned you know episodes of black mirror for example you know i can think of white the white bear episode where it's it's kind of a similar sort of vein right so yeah. this now is going to be something that tunes into people's phones or tunes into people's computers and then they're going to get feedback on it. I can You can literally see how it's going to go and how it's going to pan out. And it's going to be, as far as I'm concerned, a little bit sterile, dare I say, because I, I, I like the stakes. Uh, they they kind of shoehorned in a love interest into it, which didn't really need to happen, especially where she kept the, um, the information that, that they needed, where she kept that on a person. Um, I feel like I, I just feel like it's going to lose a lot because uh, in in this in this in the original movie Schwarzenegger is at his most misogynistic version of himself. Like he, he's uh, he's you know he he clearly had a little bit of success with the women and he and he's actually been this person in his life and he and he and he's grown over time. But there will be some ridiculous cameo from Arnie in there. There ha there mm. will be. You can see it coming. There will be. Um, they will change up the bad guys in it a little bit too much because they whatever they've got going on in that movie won't really age well, you know, 40 years later. Mm. Um, I just feel like it's going to be a bit sterile. It's going to be a little churned out. It's going to be this visual green screen masterpiece that's not going to have any real magic. I actually agree with you. I, Come I, on. I, I do because this film again the nostalgia of this mo movie nothing's going to replace the the classic sort of outfits um jesse ventura mm -hmm. uh you know outfit in in it and how terrible they all was i, I think yep. the only thing i enjoyed about this movie was the car that they go in at the beginning and slide <laughs> slide down uh it's the only thing that i really I re re really liked but saying that because it's going to get re, re, remade i was reading up about it did you know this film is actually based on a stephen king book yes yeah 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 it's I was really uh, shocked. He, he, he hated it so much it wasn't even stephen king actually hated it he released it under a pseudonym so uh <laughs> nobody really knew it was stephen king and it came out like 20 years later that actually yeah uh, right, you see that you see that ridiculous load of nonsense that would me that <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the person that's set to direct this is Edgar Wright, 
which oh, we oh, all then it's going to be great as a director. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I should have led with that. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. director of Shaun of the Dead, um, so many classic movies. Did you wow. know a, li a, li a little fact I read that Edgar Wright actually talked Simon Pegg out of taking a role in Dog Soldiers? That's interesting because, because Dog he wanted Simon Pegg's first role in a horror movie to be in in his horror mo mo movie, which was Shaun of the Dead. Oh, so he kind of stitched him up so he got his own way, kind of like yeah. that top shit. Yeah. Housing. And then um, we've got the uh, star that's going to be uh, the character of Arnold, which um, this guy's actually been in literally so much recently. Um, there was a film that he was in with um, oh, Jonathan Majors. Um mm -hmm. It was on Prime. He was a um, World War One or Two pilot, uh, which is quite funny because he was in Maverick. Um, is Glenn Powell? So Glenn Powell is going to be the role of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, I, I can't. None of this seems right to me, Brian. So it's going to be. I've just said it's going to be a sterile reboot, right? Green screen, yep. cornucopia, but. But then all of a sudden you attach Edgar Wright to it, so there's going to be a bit of British grittiness in there. But then you've got this chisel, good-looking sod as part of it, and, and you're kind of like, you need somebody who's got a bit more wrinkles in the forehead, somebody, you know, somebody who looks like me. You know what I mean? Some some bloke who's clearly been around the block. You know, what's um, <laughs> what's the geezer from Walking all Dead? Like me, someone show? that's been dragged on his face for at least five miles. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like John Bernthal, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this guy literally has done it all. He's done action, he's done comedy, he's done horror. So he's a great performer and a great actor. I mean, obviously in that yeah. picture, he looks very, very chiseled and it's like a, mo a model pose. Um, so we're not going to take that away from him, but I think he's going to do really, really well. You know, I've seen him in, in, in plenty of things and he's an awesome actor. But again, you, you then, you're going to compare him with Arnold and the size and the muscles and everything like yeah. that. Uh, I think you will to start with, and you will when you when you you see the trailers released and you see all the stills from it. Go well, it looks not like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then Edgar Wright will get really prickly, going, "Well, it's not supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Leave me alone. Who are you? Get out of my house." That type of thing. But mm. the there's but the the one thing that doesn't sit well with me about this entire project is that this has been in development hell for a number of years. We've been waiting for this movie to be announced for a lot of years. And I still feel like, yes, it's been greenlit. Yes, it's been announced. I still think that Edgar Wright will strop and leave this uh, this project at some point because there'll be a lot of too much, um, what they call it, studio interference yeah. and how it's supposed to be and, and all the rest of it. I can, I can just feel, I, I don't know why, I just feel like he's not going to see this project out. So clip that, clip that. It's the uh, 17th <laughs> of April. I'm calling it now. Fudge's crystal ball. Do you think, though, with Edgar Wright, Edgar Wright being uh, attached, do you think it might have a completely different spin to what we know of as the running man? It's going to be It'll completely be different. Di different uh, uh, because I think that when they remake make something, they need to put their own stamp, stamp on it, and it needs to be loosely based on the original. It's like arachnophobia. I haven't heard anything about that film. Apparently, it's, it's being remade. But I haven't Is heard it? any. Yeah, it's been remade, and I haven't heard anything about about it. So again, I don't know if it's done the old uh, the studio shelf thing. Uh, but well, I need at, to look at Roadhouse, right? Roadhouse was fun. They changed that up a little bit. They, you know, a couple of nods yeah. to the you know to the original movie. It, it was okay. It was good fun. It was what it was, which is what the original was. You know yeah. what I mean? And the the original to this movie is a proper boy film. You know what I mean? And <laughs> there's big boys in boots and explosions. I want to see that big guy singing. He's got to be there with all the lights <laughs> on. Do you know what I mean? And his Y fronts. Um, you know, yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't. Yeah. I mean, that would be awesome. May maybe we should invite Jesse Ventura onto the show and get Let's his get take on it. On. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get him on because the, apparently there's some great stories between him and Arnold in the way of going That's to the, the gym and yeah, seeing yeah. which, which, uh, which, uh, biceps were bigger um yeah, yeah. and then and then um some uh more news um uh, that's been on the internet recently peter jackson jackson i can't even speak peter jackson is in talks to revive his lord of the rings franchise with warner brothers uh pictures um 
Do you think he should? And oh, if God, you think he I should, can't. do you think a um, how they should do it? Because me personally, I think that if he's set to do it, he needs to do it like the original three, um, right. not like the last three, um, and definitely like the is it Rings of Power uh, on Amazon? I really enjoyed that. Um, listen, let's let's sit down, Fudge. I, oh God, I'm going to get chewed out by the nerds. Um, I didn't enjoy Lord of the Rings. I've watched them. I've seen them. I just thought they were okay. However, having said that, I know that it's a very evocative subject for a lot of people. And these people have read these books. They know, you know, if you're of a certain generation, you read them in school before they rolled out the Harry Potter books, if, if I remember rightly. So I understand that, you know, these some people like, I just thought the movies were not very good. Uh, the reason being is, I, when they came out, I was like 20 to 23. I didn't really give a shit about big sweeping fields in New Zealand and look how to beautiful To be honest, we know is. what you were doing at 2023, Dan. <laughs> All right, mate. Um, We've discussed you know, enough of that on this show. You, know, you, but did, like, you, you didn't have time to appreciate the finer arts. That's all I'm I, I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I, and, I, and I found it weird that Viggo Mortensen didn't really have a mega career after this movie. I, I didn't understand what the furore was around um, around gandalf and Sarah mckellen and why everybody thought he was great to me it was just old man plays character you know what i mean i just i i don't i didn't it just didn't grab me and and then that last half an hour of that third movie bored me to absolute piss and tears and and then the ending of the first one where he goes well we're off sam oh we're going over that hill all right sick and then it just ends really annoyed me <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. I just they just didn't grab me. But I know that. I, I but I'm not gonna poo poo it. I I just feel like you know, for me personally, it's not for me. And I, I and rebooting it 21 years after the last one seems a little bit well, insane think, to me. But I, don't think I also know re- that there's a yeah, they're not going to reboot it. it. They're they're not going to reboot it. I mean, it's to revive his franchise because. You know, the first three I thought were spectacular from a cinematic point mm-hmm. point of view. The way they shot it, um, you know, just just the, the you know the makeup, the character makeup, and and the special effects back then. You you you've got to think they filmed it over, God knows how many years that they spent in New yep. New Ze- Ze- Zealand film filming it. And then the last three, for me, ruined it with the CGI. Um, and, and you know, and the way it was filmed, I didn't, I didn't like li- like I it. Just, but I, I didn't really give a shit about the makeup. Like I've seen makeup in movies, I didn't really care it, because it was such a big production. It had so many extras and all the rest of it. I, I understand that it was probably difficult to do, but as far as the viewers concerned, it's just this little envelope on this massive screen, right? So you can like it is what it is. Whether they put CGI extras in or it was real geezers it's just what you're seeing in front of you and it it, it reminded me a lot of when you see characters on screen vamping and all the crew are laughing and they're going oh he's doing really well he's ad lived that really well but when it comes across on screen it don't really land best example i can give you is gold member when he's talking amongst himself when he's got uh Austin Powers, Goldmember, and Doctor Evil talking, and you can imagine the crew going, "Oh my God, this is amazing! Look how quick his brain works!" But it doesn't really translate, and you're like, "This is weird." So when you're when you're watching a movie, it's just a movie, and and, and so the the production woes that they had in getting this movie out, I don't really give a toss. You know, I I, I could spend fifteen quid and go to the cinema and watch. Will Ferrell's god awful Sherlock Holmes nonsense, or I can spend fifteen quid and watch this. It's still just a movie, and I know that sounds ridiculous on a show like this. But every every opinion counts. I mean, I mean, if you don't like this, that 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 is fine. I mean, the next piece of news, I think it's utter trash, and should not get remade. I think it's the worst thing ever, and that is Red Dwarf. I I'm only joking. Me. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only jo- 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 joking. Did, yeah. Literally, li- literally, Cat for me will always be the man from Maid Marion and his married me- uh, merry men. Really? Yeah. You remember Daddy John Jules from that more than you remember him as Cat? Yeah, because I can remember I broke I broke my heart my, my arm, and they had World of Robin Hood. Do you remember that? In 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 Nottingham, it was a place called World of Robin Hood. Yes, yes. It and they actually took, like and that. they took uh, some of the set from uh, the Prince of Thieves film 
with Kevin Cost mm-hmm. Cost Costner. And then one ch- children in need night, I went along with my dad, and I got them all to sign my arm. I had Tony Robinson. I had I had Ka- uh, you know everyone. And I can remember when I got the cast taken off my arm, they wouldn't let me keep it. Wow, it had to be chucked chucked away. So it's devastating. But the news is they are coming back for a remake. Well, not a re a re a remake. They're Another they're bringing series. the gang back together. Um, they've been doing the convention circuits, and they've all been very vo- vocal about it. That it is definite, and they are coming back. So we are oh, going to see it, a it... red dwarf very very soon. What is it? Are we on season 14 now or something like that? So I, I need to tell you about this show, right? So if you've never come across this show, this was so very 90s. This, this, It was on the edgy slot of Thursday night at 9 o'clock on BBC2 where you put the edgy comedy on, right? Mm-hmm. And, the, and um, Craig Charles, I forgot your name there, Craig. Sorry, pal. Bless me. Um, Craig Charles was a poet doing the circuits around the clubs not really done any acting before or anything like that. And the way he delivered these lines in his audition uh, got something across. And um, and he's had a great career since on, on the back of this show. And he's now a really well-respected funk DJ. Does a really good show on Radio 1. I give it a listen. Um, but for me, Chris Barry, when I was growing up, I found the guy who plays Rimmer there with the H on his head. I found one of the funniest characters I'd ever seen because you really cared about this character and the outcome mm. of this character. But he's so dislikable and so anal and so horrid, and but you really hope that he's, you know, he he stayed around and he didn't, he, you know, nothing nothing bad happened to him like you can do with with sitcoms. But this to me is what you, you talked about with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This to me, I, I watched this show when it, it was just this random show that I was flicking through the channels when I was eight years old when this came out. This for, and I've watched it ever since. <laughs> Is your uh, is your background falling to bits there, Brian? Are you uh, <laughs> as I'm waxing lyrical? As I'm waxing lyrical about one of my favourite shows for the last thirty odd years, your your background's falling falling to bits. Uh, but yes, I'm very excited about this, and um, with the exception of the one where they go back to Earth, where it's based on the Rutger Hauer um, Blade Runner. What's, what's that movie? Blade Runner movie. Apart, you know, apart from that one, they're all absolutely beautiful, and I could I could watch them all day. I just hope that they keep the really bad special effects. And the I hope laugh. they keep the guy, you know, the guy holding the spaceships with a little bit of smoke coming from it. Do you know what I mean? Because I think that is what made made it. They knew that they couldn't do mm. these elaborate special effects, but I think that makes it because the script alone makes up for everything. The characters yep. make up for everything. So it'd be quite nice to see them again in a room together delivering these great lines um and i know there's loads of fans out there that cannot wait so if you see any of these awesome people at conventions coming up very very soon just say to them how excited you are because i i think it's going to mean the world to them because you know it started in the what the late 80s uh 88 yeah 88 and then it it, it changed channels and and it's it's gone on for 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 many a decade so It'll be quite nice to see the. It'll be quite nice to actually get TV that we want to see back on our screens, and yeah, some, some something that's been going on for many many years that hasn't been censored or banned. Do you know what I mean? Well, so many shows have been banned. If, so. if you think about this show, right in the in the main ensemble cast, you've got it. You've got a, a a mixed race main character. You've got a black character in there. There's no. Uh, over language in there. There's a couple of cheeky jokes that are more, you know, postcard humor in references mm. to sex in it. It's just really well written. It is just funny without having yeah. to resort to anything else. It was progressive and it was and it was great. And you could, to an extent, show it to kids of a certain age. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> so as soon as we find out more information, uh, we'll share it with the world. And then um, a show that's, that c- c- came out at the beginning of the week, uh, I've binged watched it, and I've got to say it's excellent. It's Fallout. Um, I know you haven't watched it yet, uh, but Radio Times, for all the viewers in the States or out of the UK that's watching right now, Radio Times is a, st- you know, is a staple to our culture mm-hmm. in the way of it's been around for decades uh, and Radio Times has given it a four out of five, five stars. Um, 
it's a great show. I've never played the game. Um, yeah. Apparently, Fallout 4 helped the writers of West Westworld um, uh, with the writing of that show. Did you know that? I hope they did season one and not season two, though. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's a, there's no, no. Apparently, they 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 read. Well, they played the game to get to grips with like the uh, the mechanics and and the western world and everything like that in a, a post apocalyptic way and and that's what influenced westworld which i think is incredible credible but this show again has got Wal- walton goggins in it and he's great this guy that guy is just literally pure gold no matter what he's in if it's six son sons of anarchy which I thought he was incredible in. <laughs> um, and then obviously he's a ghoul in this show. And it's just incredible. It really, really is. To say it's only eight episodes long and it's been renewed for a second season already uh, before it came out, which of course Halo did as well, because this is from Paramount Plus. Um, so we get to hear about Halo. You're right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, do you know what? And, I just I absolutely inhaled something there. But yeah, sneezed. so if mind. anyone's watched this and they want to comment, please comment away because you know a lot of people again are quite passionate and quite vocal about it because it's been adapted from a, a computer game. But mm-hmm. I think they've done so a really, got, really good it's job. Got that, it's got that new audience that that we've just sort of realised over the last few weeks as we've been watching Halo and we've spoke to these people that have been in and around this show. You know what I mean? We've realised that the uh, the comic book, uh, the computer game adaptation fans are a new a new breed of um, uh, yeah, administering feedback. I tell you what, I've just realised here, Brian. Um, what's the code? What's the code? Oh, the code, the secret code. Um, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, what was going to say? So, prop store. I've got an auction starting tomorrow. And it's, oh, a poster, it's a poster collectible auction. So post collectible poster auction, um, which mm-hmm. is to, uh, the 18th, so tomorrow and the 19th, go onto their website, propstore.com. I chatted to Gray Smith, which is the coolest poster expert that Prop Store has got. He's from Dallas, Texas. And he was sat there, and I could listen to him talk all day. I really could. About and we poster. spoke about posters yeah so so on on the channel if you look on the U, the youtube channel there's there's an interview with gray smith from prop store um talking about some of the items that they've got so like original die hard po- 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 posters from around the world the goonies and and these have got estimates between a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars so these are post yeah. posters that are really really rare and and you you unique but if you're not in for auctions you can go to the buy now section on on propstore.com um i've got a little uh what's the code right oh you're gonna stitch me up again with the code aren't you no, across the box no not at all so no ruin that the game. julia is ruined that game julia tell him off he's ruined that the game. code that the code there there is. is brian 10 so basically you can get 10 percent off at on any item in the buy now section on propstore.com. So if you're after a costume piece or a prop that's been on screen in a movie, this is the place to go. Um, me and Dan go there every November to uh, check out the pieces in, in their auction. I can't wait to go this November. It's it's going to be a, f- a flash away. Do you know what I mean? This year is going so fast as it is. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to uh, going down there and and and, and, and visit, visit, visiting Tim and, and 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 Steve, Stephen and the gang to look at the uh, amazing props that they've got. So Brian ten, and you can get ten percent off at the buy now now section, um, which I'm sure will make someone very happy if you get them a nice nice piece for Christmas, bar mitzvah, whatever occasion. Circumcision. Um, <laughs> yeah, circumcision. <laughs> vasectomy. Happy vasectomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here Happy is. vasectomy. Here's Edward. Dave Lister's hat. This is Edward Scissorhands glove. <laughs> snip, snip. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, some more news um, from the camp in um, CinemaCon. Um, what is uh, Julie's just put? What is your favourite props for which show or movie? Oh, 
So I own a few props myself. My um, my prize is a crystal from the original Superman movie, uh, which is worth quite a bit, and I've had it for for longer than I've been married. <laughs> um, so it's travelled with me to Cyprus, to London, to to Nottingham. Um, I've had it for many, many years, and I've got a original Superman production news script as well. Have you got anything, Dan? This is yes, where this, this is where I, he goes. I've nicked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. St- I did steal a reproduction of it. I have a nineteen eighty nine uh, Batarang. You know the little ones. Yeah. I've got a. I have got a. Re- no, sorry, that was the Christopher Nolan ones. You know the ones that he throws into Geezer's neck. Well, they like the Death Star things. Yeah, they're like they're like yeah, like the Shinobi things. I've got one from the actual movie. I'm just trying to see if it's on this fireplace I'm next to, but it's not. Um, and then I've got a, a reproduction of the Michael Keaton Batarangs, the the, the bigger ones. Yeah. You know, the ones like this big. Yeah, I've got a reproduction of one of them. Big, you know, really, uh, really prized possession. Because I've moved out, I think it's in a um, I think it's in a box somewhere. But yeah, I've got a I've got a. Um, the Christopher Nolan uh, Batarang. Uh, I, I think I called the Batarang. I should have really looked it up, shouldn't I? But I think that's what they called it. But then when we went to Prop Store, there was various bits from Back to the Future, which is a lot of people's favourite movie. So you have your hover, hoverboards and there's there's various bits for, from that movie. And I, I really like the, the Black & Decker... Um, the hydrator when she puts the pizza in and there, there was there was versions of that and stuff like that so anything that's back to the future and um and batman i kind of i kind of lose my mind a little bit and there was a point i went to manchester comic con about 10 years ago and uh and we had a look around and you know there wasn't a lot going on when the comic con circuit kind of started up in the uk what it, it, it essentially just was just a big market to buy stuff wasn't it just to buy pop vinyls essentially yeah. and uh and, and figures of things. And I uh, went to the Manchester one and um, and these reproducted Batarangs, the, uh, the reproduction of the original one that I've got, the, the, the little metal ones, they were like a fiver. So for about two years afterwards, I used to measure the uh, expense of things in Batarangs. So that, you know what I mean? Oh, that's that's £2.50, so it's, it's 0.5 Batarangs. This is like, I'm not buying that, it's like 10 Batarangs. <laughs> so... Uh, so that's that's where that came from. So yes, I I do have bits. But uh, I've I've got to say, if I won the lottery, uh, I would definitely spend quite a bit at prop store uh, filling the house with just random things. So when someone comes super, in the front door, it will be fantastic. like when you go into the front door of prop store. Do you know what I mean? You're face to face with yeah, a yeah. giant robot from Judge Dredd or some or something. I tell you, I tell you what though, I I wouldn't mind getting up close and personal with like Chris Barry's suits from Red Dwarf because the evolution of those suits, you know, I, I remember it vividly. I've I've seen them happen over over the years. I've seen it move. I'd love to get get a good look at uh, Lister's jacket and the patches and the way they've modified that and the evolution of Crichton's outfits and stuff like that, or just to see a rack of the cat suits. I know, I know that would be something I'd uh, I'd have to lick well, you and know then what? Uh, because. I'm yeah, when we it. find out that when they're filming and what production company, I think that we should uh, send the production company a few emails and, and see if we can get mm-hmm. a day on set. See if we can yeah, get down, 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 down there and um, even be an extra. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just walking in the back like, Dan, don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> you're like, you're like, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Um so yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, more news from the CinemaCon. Um, again, I don't know what to think about this. Is the Transformers? Because uh, you mentioned it earlier on, the Transformers and the GI Joe um, crossover. Um, the first GI Joe, I actually really not like. I had Rachel um, on that played um, uh, Scarlet in it, um, and she was ama- amazing. The second one, I wasn't a great fan of. Um, that's the one with Bruce Willis and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Views on it, just quickly. Your views, five words to to sum up what you're, you know, what you think this movie is going to be like. Who is this for, fam? That's very good, actually. That's five. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was quite impressed, impressed with that because I'll be rubbish at that. 
Um, yeah, so uh, that 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 is that. I'm not going to uh, talk about it too much because uh, we'll wait and see. Um, again, it was teased at the end of Rise of the Beasts uh, with a with character Noah, and he gets approached by some people and they hand him a card, and obviously on that card it's got G.I. Uh, Joe um, logo on it. Let's see. It could be Asbro's version, you know, uh, of trying to get in the game again. Uh, I don't mind them. The popcorn movies. I call them popcorn mo- mo- movies because well, I, I'm when all right you've with got nothing popcorn. else to do, it's entertainment. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to yep. make your mind work overboard. It's not going to be a, um, you know, a Shutter Island or, or you know, you know um, what's the, Inception. What's the one with Mark? What's the one with Mark Wahlberg in it? Is that like the third or the fourth one or something like that, right? Um, that's the one, funny enough, that's that's filmed in Chicago. Um, you oh, know, nice. With, right. You know, with the bridges, um, with, 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 that's with the, the water. So like, my issue with the Transformers movies, apart from the fact that it wasn't for people our age who, who played with Transformers as a kid, like like we did with G.I. Joe's, Pori yeah. play. But, the, but there was just points in the first one where... There was too many masturbation jokes uh, uh, with with Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is not likable in anything he's ever done. Um, and then you added in Just John Totoro's, <laughs> yeah. Then you added John Totoro's character, who wasn't believable as a human being in the role that he was in. Mm. Um, but again, I, I appreciate it's about alien monsters, alien robot monsters, right? I, I, I understand that, but it just it just annoyed me. The one with Mark Wahlberg kind of sat okay in the modern world a little bit for some reason. I kind of like, yeah, I like that he was a bit of a loser. It, it, it kind of it was a lot more grounded. If if you know what I mean, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, is, is that I, the best one of the? I like, I like, I like Mark. Uh, the happening, I didn't like. It didn't happen for me. I don't know about you, but you know, when you're talking to a plant, come on. Um, but yeah, uh, let let let's see. I think it's going to be a bit rocky. Uh, but uh, one film I'm looking forward to is is oh hello. What's that? That's Take my him. reminder to do this show an hour ago. Wow. Good man, good man. Um, <laughs> Gladiator Two. I know you laughed at it, um, and right. Cin- CinemaCon showed showed some footage, and apparently it was that good. Everyone was clapping and screaming. Um, and again, this is done by Ridley Scott, uh, the guy mm-hmm. that did the first Gladiator. This is picking up with um, Maximus's um, son. I can't remember his How? name. Is it Lucius? Because because it because he's alive, because he never died. But he in. What do you mean huh? he, di- he, di- he died? He got burnt in a house. Maybe he got out. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe I, maybe you know it was all a, a conspiracy. It's got Denzel my, my, Washington my... in it, so you never know. Denzel may have like kick kick kicked down his wife's back doors, right, <laughs> and. Um, Went in like the equaliser, grabbed them, got them out, and now they're in witness protection. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. you know, Den- Den- Denzel, what like this is going to be a good film. Why? Because Denzel Washington's in it. He, for me, has right. never done a bad film. And you can disagree with me, but I just think that um, you know, you name me a bad bad film that Den- Den- Denzel's done. Go on. What's the Civil War one that he did? I, I you know, I. I... I, I could, there was one where he was in the American Civil War. Um, Gettysburg. Could have been. I don't know. It was trash. Didn't go, didn't, I only got halfway through it. But listen, let me tell you about my concerns with Gladiator 2 here, right? Let me let me lay them out. And a lot of them are similar to the Running Man reboot, right? So Yeah, but it's not a, not, not, not a reboot, though, is it's it? It's not a reboot. It, 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 it's, but it, the trope of bringing back an IP where it's passed on to the son is nothing short of hilarious to me, especially the son that we all thought were dead, probably, unless he had another side son before he died that we didn't know about. However, but the main concern with that is, they might explain all that really well, but the, my main concern with this is, when Ridley Scott's Gladiator came out 24 years ago, 
I was absolutely stunned. I was blown away by the trailer where the the tiger takes a swipe at him mm. in the Coliseum, and we had these big, stunning, sweeping shots. The lighting and the the glistening, and, and there's one where he's spinning spinning the club over his head, and the sun's behind him. I thought, you know, for somebody who was 20 years old, that I've, I've already said on this show tonight that I don't didn't really give a shit about something like that. It caught me. I was like, "Good lord, this is absolutely beautiful." This is stunning. And all of a sudden, we've moved on from celluloid movies that were a bit slapstick in the 80s. We've moved into the 90s where we just uh, introduced CGI. And all of a sudden, movies looked a certain way. And this was one of the first that I saw that I went, wow, what they, the stuff they're going to be able to do in movies is going to be incredible going forward. Have mm. you, yeah, and I'll I tell you what I'm going to ask you, Brian, right? When you look at a movie from the 80s, and you look at a movie from the 90s, you yeah. can pretty much pinpoint which decade a movie was was released in. You, can, you know, to, yeah. to give or take a couple of years either side. But, but from about 2002 to now, apart from the clothes, they all tend to really look the same. They don't really... They're not decadable, if, if that makes sense. And this movie here and the reboot of Running Man is going to sit in that tragic trash age of CG cinema. It's going to get lost in the wash, if that makes it. I hope I'm wrong. I absolutely adored the first one. Don't get me wrong. But again, it's going to be like what I was saying last week about Star Trek. When you get a new season, all of the characters that you liked, all of the characters that you had an affinity with, and you saw a protagonist that was better for the whole experience and all the rest of it, none of them are going to be in it. Mm -hmm. Like... And the fact that it's called Gladiator 2 kind of annoys me because we all know now, we've learned in cinema to stop numbering sequels. Police Academy ruined that for everybody and Fast and Furious. <laughs> so why have they not called it Gladiator again? No? Gladiator Coliseum. Or just call it Coliseum or something. Huh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it yeah. just Gladiator 2 is the naffest title I've ever heard. The thing is, you know, Denzel Washington, Pedro Pascal, you know, he, he he's in God. it as well. You've got Josie Quinn, you've got Connie Nelson. You know, the cast in this is incredible and is either going to be this epic sort of cinematic film that, that Ridley Scott is very well known for, or it's going to, yeah, it's not going to uh, gel with people because... P the, they've got to explain it very, very well. They've got to explain why it's number two. Uh, why is his son? Uh, I, I, you know what? I look forward to it. Any film like this, I quite like. Uh, because it brings uh, out... me, though... It brings out all the historians. Because you get the histor historians out going, they never wore armour like that. It, they never held a sword like that. And and I like to watch it. It's, that's like pop popcorn reading. You know, You know what I mean? On socials. I, I, I completely understand that. But uh, but for me, this is a last gasp attempt. And you can see the 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 the, mo the meeting that they've had. Hey, oh, nobody goes to cinema anymore. I know. What was that last movie you went to cinema and thought, oh, bloody hell, that looked really good on cinema. Batman. All right, let's make another one of them. All right. Uh, nobody's good at cinema anymore. What was the last movie you went to? <laughs> Oh, I remember liking Gladiator. Oh, I tell you what, that that forty-year-old bloke in the corner knows what he's talking about. Gladiator did look mint in the cinema. Let's get him. Let's get people back to the cinema with. with anybody got another? We need. We need a title. Is that Hollywood? Yeah, we need a title for this new movie. Oh, what was it going to be? Gladiator. Gladiator. All right. Yeah, hang on. Um, have you tried Gladiator Two? Sold. Let shine it up. Let's greet like this. You know what I mean. It, it, Ridley Scott, will, I'm sure, will not put his name to something. I mean, he doesn't need to. You know, this guy has made so many classic movies, so many movies that will see the test, test, test of time. So I am sure that literally he's, he's only got this name on this because of how good it's going to be. And I've seen footage of it, and it does look like... It does give, give me the feels of the first gla Gladiator. And, you know, they've got to really pull something out of the bag for it to be not compared as much to the you know the first one because the first one whatever franchise you're in is always the best uh, with the exception of terminator star wars terminator um and superman 
you know so uh there's plenty of movies out there that you can compare but um and then um i'm just looking at the time uh sonic 3 uh for the kiddies yeah. and for family jim carrey is back and shadow is, is kicking butt yeah so you got knuckles they, uh, that is coming they announced out keanu reeves didn't they as shadow I, I i guess that we had on the show ian hamlin tweeted the the news it like because ian plays shadow in the computer games in a cartoon yeah. doesn't he yeah and did yeah. they announce keanu reeves as shadow yeah so oh, I love it. um so yeah so that's been announced and obviously knuckles uh, is coming out on paramount plus with um adam pally he's back um I had him on the show a little while back, well, more than a while, while, while back, about a year ago, and he was just finishing making Knuckles, so he couldn't really talk about it. But he's playing mm. one of the main characters in it. He's the uh, police officer from the original, mo like the you know the movies. Um, so I'm looking forward to that because every, everyone loves a good movie, like a feel good movie, something that's not going to upset us too much um and then obviously transformers one which is an animated series uh coming out avatar is getting an animated trilogy uh with um bautista as a villain uh um, nice so yeah and then spongebob there's another spongebob movie coming out smile Brilliant. two i haven't seen smile one um so Terrible. that's that's that horror movie have you watched it yeah, I watched it on a plane on the way to Brazil. <laughs> I sat yeah. there like, oh, God, it scared the bejesus out of me. That and uh, the movie Megan. I watched those on oh. a plane. And, uh, God, Do you know what? No Smile has got the, probably the best ad campaign prior, mm. like before a film came out. Because what they did, they got actresses to go to like um, baseball games and, and football games and stuff like that. And get them to stand in the the audience with that smile on their face uh, with a t-shirt that says smile in the hope that the cameras will, would catch them and they made Amazing. like local press they made the papers of like what the hell is this what is this about and they did that before the film got announced um and, it, and 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 whoever thought of it i just think it's genius absolutely genius um, was there was was there whispers of because uh, you've just sent me on a train of thought then about what you told there was whispers of uh, Blair Witch getting an, another run yeah. out because yeah, why? That, the viral why? campaign for that in the late nineties was spectacular the second one was utter trash yeah uh, and and when you really think about it Blair Witch as a movie wasn't great yeah it was the furore around it that, that yeah. was so creative and so good mm. is it it was the first of its kind in the lost tape sort of move you know the movie genre, genre and 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 the problem for me is that if it gets remade it's not gonna have the same effect so what's the point no. you know with the no. second one they tried to obviously understand that it's not gonna have the same effect so they made it slightly different but if they remake it we're gonna go into the cinema because i can remember i went to the odeon Cin cinema in nottingham in the market square with dougal um mm -hmm. back back in the day and um I remember sat there watching it thinking, oh, you know, is this real or not? I, I, came, I came out thinking, it's, it's, got, it's got to be pretend, it's a film. Uh, but it did make you think. And that scene at the end with the handprints on the wall, uh, with the kid's handprints, and then the kid, or, you know, or the person in the corner facing the corner, scared the hell out of me. But oh, yeah, I hated I don't, it. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I don't think that they should re remake it. I think they should just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Pick um but no so um this saturday um just to uh, remind everyone that i've got a live because you're busy sir so i've got justin howe who is the stunt double for master chief um in Great. halo the series in uh, season one and two and he's currently in atlanta being the lead stunt double for superman for james gunn so i'm going to try and get some stuff out of him for that um, and also look on his socials. Um, this guy is amazing. He's just done a uh, short film with his other half. She's a, a stunt performer, performer as well, and she's incredible. Oh, yeah. um, and they've just just done a video, and it's just amazing. It really, really is. So this Saturday, eight o'clock, uh, I'm going live. Obviously, we're not here next 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 week, but I will be putting something on social media, uh, potentially with a guest that I'm talking to for. The week after um but thank you so much for everyone watching uh if you haven't subscribed please hit subscribe 
It helps the channel out massively. And tell your friends that every Wednesday, except for next Wednesday, we're going to be live 8 o'clock. Uh, just chat, chat in the breeze. Uh, thank you, Dan, for being an awesome co-host. Um, do you know what? I think I've spoken to you more over the last like year than I did in the two, yeah, two, the two and a half years that we worked together, which is great. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you, everyone watching. Look after yourself. Keep safe. Any parting words, Dan? See you later. Thank you.